everybody, it is 6 a.m., way early, and I'm here in a pitch black place. Look, at it is, you can see my reflection there. That is outside, it is pitch black outside right now. And I'm here in Big Sur, California, which I absolutely love. It's one of Ash and my favorite places to be. So with that being said, I am going to do Coffee with Shanda here in the dark which I love, and we're gonna talk about enrollment. We're gonna talk about how do you, how do you enroll as an entrepreneur and how do you um, basically enroll yourself in the things that you need to do and how do you roll, uh, uh, enroll other people in things that you really know that they need to do in order to better their life. Hi, Wendy McKenna. Hi, Jamie, Suzanne, Michelle, Cassandra, Gladys, yay! Carrie. All right, you guys. Um, so we're going to talk about enrollment. I'm here. Like I was just showing some people who jumped on earlier. I'm here in Big Sur having a little bit of a getaway with my hubby. And look at how black it is outside. It's so black, but it's so beautiful out here. You can't see the sun's trying to start to come up. I've got a hammock over here. It's just so beautiful. So we're out here in the woods um, at a resort called Ventana, which is just incredible. If you ever get a chance to come here, you should come here. They have something called glamping as well, where you can, um, they have a hut in the middle of the forest and you sit in, you, you sleep in the middle of the forest and there's like a, a, a glamorized hut and, um, the floors are heated and you, have, you won't see any other tents around you and you can just keep all the tent folded back and it's just this beautiful, like you in the middle of the forest sleeping. Of course, you have room service, meaning they come and service your room. And if you have to go to the bathroom, the bathroom is like all marble and just absolutely gorgeous. But anyway, enough about Ventana, but you should definitely come check it out. Okay, so um, let's talk about enrollment. Um, so uh, what spurred this actually was a couple of my clients keep asking me to teach some more about our enrollment, which I am actually doing in our Pace Club group. Um, I'll be teaching you guys enrollment again tomorrow. But, um, but enrollment starts with how you operate behind closed doors. So a lot of times we think that it's about, you know, how do I get people to do things? And that's about convincing. And you don't want to be in the art of convincing. You want to be in the art of enrollment. So a great example of this is I always say to my husband that I want to be more adventurous. I'm looking at him right now as he's laying in bed. I'm like, more adventurous, um, travel more, like do more fun things. Like I'm, I'm always on this art of optimizing my business, my life, my friendships, my marriage. Like everything to me is like, how do I optimize it so that I get the most out of life and give the most in life? And so what, um, he wanted to go hiking. He wanted to go yoga and hiking. And so we woke up in the morning yesterday and yoga was in like 20 minutes and I just have to eat first thing in the morning. Like if I don't eat, it's a problem. So I'm like, I really got to eat. Like, so one of two things, we could jog to the restaurant really quickly and eat. And so this is enrollment, right? It's giving options. It's knowing that where you're clearly going, if you don't know where you're clearly going, you're going to find that it's really hard to enroll. So if you're just, so let me put this into practical. If you're trying to sell two things in your life right now and you come to a call or, you, or you're writing an email and you're writing it to accomplish too many things, so you're having a sales conversation, you're like, well, I could really, I really have two things that I want to move or sell. And that's all about you for one. And what happens is it breaks down the clarity of um, the enrollment conversation or the enrollment email or video or whatever it is. So you got to really have a point on where you're going and make sure it's really clear. So I knew without a doubt that I needed to eat. And, um, I also knew that I was really tired. You know, I, I, I run at a high speed when we're at home and we have a toddler. And when the day ends, the toddler's jumping all over us, Zach. And so, you know, when we got to Big Sur, it was like my whole, my whole nervous system went choo-choo. Like it just like, 
you know, Ash said, you know, we probably should be here like another three days, but we don't want to be away from our son. But it's like, you know, when you go somewhere and it's like all of a sudden you just rest. Do you have a place like that in your life? Maybe I used to go to my grandparents and I was like that. My mom was like that too. And she come to her, her parents' house. It was so cozy and warm that we all just kind of like you're just your nervous system slows down. So I knew what I needed to accomplish right? Which was, I knew I needed to have a, had food. I knew I needed to sleep. I did want to go to yoga and I did want to go hiking, but even though, so when you're selling, you got to know where you're going and you got to realize that selling is not, is not really about, if you do it well, it's not about convincing people. It's about leading people. And so first you have to lead yourself and not be someone who sways all over the place. Right, so you've got to be clear, a clear stand for what it is that you want. So now look at back at your programs, products, and services and say, when you're going to offer something, are you trying to offer too much? Otherwise, are you trying to accomplish too much? So it would have been trying to accomplish too much for me to do yoga, hiking, sleeping, and eating all in like an hour and a half. It just was it was too much to be able to accomplish, especially since we we're at a hotel. So so look at that, right? So first first off, where's your clear destination that you're going that is a non-negotiable that you have to be? Then you got to realize you got other people involved. You either have a sales conversation or you're, in my case, I had my husband. And so he looked at me, he goes, you're just enrolling me. And I'm like, no, 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 it's not that I'm just enrolling you. Otherwise, I'm not convincing you. I'm just telling you what I need. And I find a negotiation. So the negotiation comes down to, you can go for a hike. Um, I'm super tired. I just need a 30 minute nap, right? Like the amount that the amount. So it's like not getting mad, not getting frustrated, not retracting and becoming passive, um, but negotiating. So there's, you know, I, I believe the art of negotiating is sometimes what people got people call selling. And I think the art of negotiating is powerful because that's when you can give a discount, you can uh, give a branch out of what you're willing to do, meaning that if you let me do this, I'll do that. Um, you, in, in actually having a conversation with someone, you could um, negotiate around their limiting beliefs, you know, um, so that could be sometimes showing points or ideas that like kind of trump the the limiting beliefs so for instance you know my husband said you always want to be more adventurous and you you know now we've got yoga hiking he understood the yoga because there was just by the time we got to the restaurant we ran to the restaurant and which is i don't know half a mile run and when we got there um we we were laughing our heads off first of all which is a good sign to sell and enroll we were laughing our heads off because we were trying to beat each other on the trail to get to the to get to the restaurant but you know we had 15 minutes till yoga so that just wasn't going to work so that automatically eliminated itself but then when we got back to the cabin i wanted to just sleep for like 30 minutes because i was just drained so i said i'll go hiking with you later if you want to go hiking later I just need to have a 30 minute lap nap. My body is just kind of downgrading. I said, it's just been a lot of moving parts inside the company in the last month. You know, we've done three, six, we've done 12 events this year already. Um, and which is more, I usually do six in an entire year. We've already done 12 this year. Um, and we have 21 that we're doing this year. So I was like, I really just need to you know, chill out. So if you just allow me to, this is the art of negotiating. If you would just allow me to, if you just allow me to coach you in business, then what I can do is I can, I'm showing in the art of a negotiation in a business strategy. Then what I can do is if you allow, if you say, if you allow me to coach you in pace club, then what I'll do is I will set you up with gene bills to actually create a strategy for this year to optimize, or I will give you my cash flow program and show you how to sell them. I, I've got a program called Shanda success system and in Shanda success system. I teach you like three hours of enrollment, right? And so, you know, instead of you going to my website and buying that, I'll give it to you if you trust me and jump into Pace Club and allow me to serve you. You get what I'm saying? So there's like negotiating and that might be in a negotiation around somebody's 
um, around somebody's limiting belief like I need to sell now. It's like, okay, well, I'll give you this product that will help you sell now. You just need to say yes to this so that you build out your full vision of what you're trying to create in your life, right? And so when you're when you're looking at enrollment, first of all, look at where are you going with enrollment? What is the non-negotiable that you know without a doubt that you need to accomplish for you and for somebody else, right? So there's always a win-win. When it's just a you win, then you'll feel yourself pushing, convincing. Um, you'll have some of you will have a hard time uh, saying a price of an offer because you'll feel like you're getting something and they're not getting something and it feels icky to you, and so you won't want to push or stand for people. So there's all these different levels of enrollment. There's your tone. How do you how do you go about? actually using your tone. So when I want somebody to really pay attention to me and to listen in on something that I'm saying, I slow my voice down. And when I slow my voice down, I'll say, see that pause? What I did right there is I had you listen in. I actually, if, if you would have noticed how you were showing up in that moment, you would have noticed that you actually stopped. You're like, what's she going to say next? So when you pause, before you say something or handle an objection or if you find yourself speaking too fast. Um, I just did a presentation in Toronto and I did three presentations in a row and the woman that was like managing the room said to me, hey, could you just slow down on your offer a little bit? I think that it would convert much better. And I said, yeah, sure. I didn't realize I was going fast. And I said, sure. And sometimes you don't realize that your tempo is fat, your tempo and your voice is fast. Just that alone, slowing down my, my offer and how I went through my offer with a slower voice tone like I'm doing right now. So then there's this, pause, and then there's this, pause. And I did an offer like that where I talked about the bullets in the program. And even though I was giving extremely crazy, intensively, like the best offer I've ever given in my life, to be quite honest, it was the most, it was the best offer for the client that I've ever offered in my entire life. And um, to the point where two people asked, why am I giving it away so cheaply? Do I need money? You know what I mean? Like it, it's so that's an interesting standpoint as well. It's like sometimes you give something away too inexpensively and people don't believe it works, right? But just slowing down on the offer doubled the conversion rate, doubled it. So sometimes we rush through the offer and the offer is just sharing what it is that, that you're willing to give and the price, like what are they buying and what is the price is the offer. So sometimes we rush through it because we just want to get to the other side of it. And so there's all these different elements of enrollment. And so I ask you right now, what is the one piece of enrollment right now that I'm sharing with you that if you were just to take one thing that I've shared so far in the last 15 minutes around enrollment, that if you just took one thing and implemented, what would it be? And why do you think it will impact your sales or your conversions in your business? Go ahead and just type that in the comment section. Now, what I'm doing even right now when I'm asking you to do that is I'm actually surveying what's landing. Right, So that's important in enrollment when I always teach our entrepreneurs to build email lists first. And the reason why I teach them how to do that first is because when you actually see what people want and what's landing with people, then that's an indication that they want more of that. And then what you can do is start tailoring your sales conversation, your content, your emails, your videos around the feedback that you're getting because you're like, oh, that landed people. And believe me, you never know what's going to land. I mean, I've been teaching sales enrollment and building businesses for a long time, and it always blows my mind what lands with people. But whatever lands, I need to slow down on that topic and go into more intimacy, go deeper into that content so that my audience really is appreciative and finds high value in the in the information that I'm giving and you're giving. Well, when someone feels high value, they're willing to actually do whatever, whatever it takes to actually invest financially. So money is always value. So the more you can increase the value of you, your products and services, the easier it will be for people to actually hire you. So I looked on a thread the other day on a, literally on a coffee with Shanda. 
And it wasn't about selling. It wasn't about, it was just about me adding value, giving back, you know, connection is currency. This coffee with Shanda is all about increasing value for our client base and the people who we don't know yet that are watching coffees with Shanda. And on the thread, it literally said, okay, I'm in, how do I sign up and work with you? And that's a power of just, if the value is high enough, then what happens is that and people are watching is what happens is people start to choose in because they start to realize, okay, if I keep doing this alone, the way I'm doing it, where am I going to be in a year from now? And you should ask yourself that question. If you keep running the habits that you're running today, where are you going to be in a year from now? And it's an important question to ask yourself. So as you're learning the art of enrollment, realize that if you're getting money objections, it actually just means that you're not giving enough. It means that you're not connected enough, um, you're not providing enough value, and so you either need to go back in the sales conversation or in your email campaigns or your video campaigns, and you need to up the content in the areas that the people say they want it. So go ahead and post, what about enrollment? Do me a favor and give back to me. What about this enrollment coffee with Shanda is landing for you that if you feel like if you got more information or you implemented it, that you would really transform your results inside your business. Just go ahead and pop that in the comments section. And what you're doing right now is you're being, you're being, um, you're being giving back to me, but you're also helping me as an influencer and a trainer and a teacher really be able to look at what you need more of. And I can promise you, I will deliver it. And the more I deliver based on what it is that you want, the more you're going to be willing to actually either invest in working with me or invest in even working with somebody else, which I know this might, let me give a distinction on this. This might be wacky, but, um, at the end of the day, whatever industry you're in, you're standing shoulder to shoulder with the other people who are training or giving good content in that industry. And at the end of the day, when you create a movement, a movement is never about you. A movement, like for me, I am really on a movement where money is never a reason why people don't take action in their life. And I will face the fire in people. I will face, um, I will face people, you know, I will face enrolling people in building their business and then them go work with somebody else. It does like, don't get me wrong. I want you to come work with me and I want to help you. And I also know inside my community when, by the time you get to marketing mastery, there's incredible people in there that you can hire as well. My point is, is that I'm still about the mission before like the people before the profits. Right. And so when you operate like that, you never have a shortage. Like we do not have a shortage of people filling out applications, watching our webinars, private messaging me right now to come and allow us to help you build your business. We have no shortage of that. And that's because the value of connection out there of things like coffee with Shanda and webinars, they're going all the time. Like uh, our information is out there training all the time. And so people are able to raise their hand and to say that they want to come work with us on a regular basis by sending us inbox messages, comments, watch our webinars, whatever, right? Our applications, they, they will find us because we don't make it hard for them to find us on each of these, you know, these videos. Like even if you look in the description right now, you got helpmeshanda.com, which either goes to an application or right now it's going to a web, a webinar that I'm doing live on Wednesday, right? So you have all these different all these different layers of adding value which then reduces the conversation of i don't have the money so i don't have the money just means that i don't value what it is that it, that you're offering or i've made mistakes in the past and i'm afraid to take a chance again so I'm going to end right here on 6 a.m. Coffee with Shanda. It's 20 minutes in, so and it's starting to get light out. And my husband and I are actually going to do yoga this morning. So God bless you guys, and I hope that you're doing great. I'll be back on a plane to California, or I guess I'm still in California, but Southern California later on today. And then the end of the week, I'll be heading back to Toronto to lead a workshop, and then I am taking off to Toronto this, or taking off to Barbados this week. So tune in to 6 a.m. Coffee with Shanda all week, 
before we take a break when I head to Barbados. All right, you guys. Thank you. Hey, if you found this valuable, I'd appreciate it if you take a moment and just share this coffee with Shanda right now. That's how I can tell that you appreciated it. So go ahead and share it if that um, if it made a difference for you, and I really appreciate that. I look at everybody who shares. Um, sometimes I give gifts to the people who share. And so thank you. Just thank you for being here, and thank you for allowing me to impact your life. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you.